We're gonna go over strength training for softball and we're gonna start, right? <sighs> So when we're looking at softball, we have to comprehend that softball is freaking fast. There is an absurd amount of hand-eye coordination that is occurring at ungodly speeds. And I've seen comparisons when a woman throws from the softball mound versus when a dude is throwing from a pitcher's mound in baseball and the speed correlation because of the timing. It is so freaking fast fast and so when we're doing some type of strength training we have to look at precision of strength training and we also have to have an understanding that these athletes need to have a gun on them right they need to have a freaking really strong shoulder really strong trunk or core really strong hips not only do you have to react quickly when you're in the box but you also have to react very very quickly when you're out on the field because it's smaller field and it's happening that much quicker it makes the game completely different from baseball i think that's one thing that people inside of softball understand but on the outside of softball a lot of strength coaches don't comprehend that the games are very different the games are just incredibly different as far as pace is concerned and as far as precision is concerned and so when we're building out some type of strength training system we have to look through the sport through that specific lens. Let's just go into what are we gonna be targeting, right? The core, the hips, okay, right away. That's where we gotta think about, okay, how can we actually target those specific areas? Second big factor, we gotta make sure that the athlete's very, very fast and very explosive. So we have to understand things like that. Now, fortunately for us, we've broken down some research as far as how can we improve what this research has said, like the effect of different strength training modalities on sprint performance in female team sports. So we know what the research says and then we can use that to apply to strength training for softball because we have the data now. They're actually doing some research on women. This is great, right? Also, women have to have a cannon. They've gotta be able to freaking throw frozen ropes from deep center down into home plate, right? That's gonna be a key factor. And then finally, those strong legs. So where can we start with analyzing that and then implementing that training into the actual athlete? And I think that right off the bat, we've gotta focus on learning proper power cleans and proper front squats. And this will help with developing hip extension. Okay, so think about swinging a bat. Think about throwing a ball. Okay, think about jumping. Think about diving. Think about sprinting. There's a lot of hip extension involved. There's a lot of rapid rates of coordination. If we understand how to do a power clean, if we understand how to do a front squat, that's gonna improve our overall speed and our overall mechanics. So if we go back to that research paper, the effect of different strength training modalities on sprint performance in female team sports, we know that maximal strength training done concurrently with reactive based training leads to a lot more speed. We know that with women. So if that's the case, we need to train that way power cleans, front squats, and then we can use some type of contrast training. That means learning how to fire as quickly as possible while still using our hips, while still getting stronger and still being as structurally stable as possible. And in most cases, a power clean or a front squat or a back squat is going to be the first and second exercise that you're gonna see inside of your specific strength training program in peak strength. If you guys need help as a softball player or even as a softball coach, you wanna learn and develop your overall repertoire, head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store or the Apple iOS Store. You can download Peak Strength and then click on softball so that you can improve your overall performance. Now, the next big factor that we've gotta get into is core work. First of all, the front squat is absolutely fantastic for stronger abs, just like doing a goblet squat, just like doing a single leg squat. These are all movements that are fantastic for developing that core, for developing that overall body awareness. But we can also do things like plate rotation, side medicine ball throws, fowlers, anything along those lines to add in some type of more dynamic movement. One thing that we've even had with some of our best softball players on site. Okay, so we've got athlete Kyla Redding. Led the county last year in home runs. She was an all-state softball player as a junior and she's power clean 70 kilos. She's got a vertical jump over 27 inches. She's a freaking powerhouse. And a lot of that training is from the trunk work that we do, from the side medicine ball work that we do, from the cleans, from the squats, okay? And then we get into some other stuff. For shoulder work, let's start with developing just simple movements like dumbbell external rotations, seated dumbbell external rotations. Let's protect the cannon. Let's protect the arm. Let's try and focus on that 
area of range of motion through a slow and controlled eccentric. And then usually that's gonna be something that you're gonna see also inside the accessory portion of your peak strength workout. So we're gonna to try to improve those things, just like wise on the incline. And then we're gonna get into some type of pull-up. It could be a pull-up, a neutral grip pull-up, maybe even a chin-up. And this is one thing that I think a lot of strength coaches forget about. One, women should be doing pull-ups. Yes, women can do pull-ups. Two, women should be doing weighted pull-ups. Three, we can put a weight in their feet. We can put a weight on their thighs. We can put a weight on their calves. And we can train the abs while they do that pull-up. And that's gonna improve not only their strength in their lats and their strength in their shoulder girdle, which is gonna be protective and it's gonna help them to throw harder, but it's also gonna create much more structural stability. So that way, this is another aspect, is that if we're learning how to clean and we're learning how to do front squats and we're doing jumps properly and we're doing pull-ups and dumbbell external rotations, there's something known as the quiet eye, okay? And this is real. You can go to PubMed and actually search quiet eye. If we can train athletes to be able to do high-speed movements with coordination, when they're running, they start to zero in and they can track things much better. So think about a softball player tracking a ball as they're sort of shuffling out of the box. Think about a softball player tracking a fly ball to go get an out. These are ways that we can train things like the quiet eye, which will improve their hand-eye coordination. But then if we're training things like power cleans and single leg squats and front squats and weighted pull-ups, everything really starts to come together so that they can move at faster speeds. Their opposition will be in slow motion and they'll be going at high speeds. And then finally, that's gonna take us to stronger legs. We've talked about this a little bit already, but if we can develop a program, right? An inside peak strength that might look like power cleans are first, then front squats. You know, then do, throughout the week, on day two, you might do some upper body work. On day three, we're gonna get into that reactive work. So that's where you might see PVC pipe walks to focus on stability. We might do some single leg bounds. We might do some jump step ups, some jump lunges, anything along those lines, stair jumps, right? And then finally, we're gonna get to the point where you do an impulse day, and that might be where we do a power snatch or a power clean, and then you actually focus on some single leg squats that are unbroken, and then paired potentially with some type of explosive movement using those contrast methods, that's gonna be research driven. The evidence from the science is there. Check out the effect of different strength training modalities on sprint performance in female team sports. So we can take that science back workout, apply it, know that we need to be training for an entire year over and over and over again with these women. And we can continuously develop their shoulder strength, their core stability, their hip extension. We can get them to run faster. We can get them to have a stronger arm and we can get them to be more explosive as softball players. Head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store or the Apple iOS Store, because remember, freaks, if you wanna become a champion, you've always gotta cultivate your power. Peace.